Hey guys, I just wanted to make a brief introduction video to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to be putting out videos pretty much as often as I can. Um, I've decided to start this YouTube channel because I, I enjoy editing and filming quite a bit, and I really want to improve my editing skills. And on top of that, I, I enjoy RuneScape quite thoroughly, which is obviously why I'm playing it right now. Guys, this literally took me like three hours, but look at the screen and look at that. Twitch is working. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Road to Maxcape. So in this clip, you will see me getting level 75 runecrafting. And actually, I got this off of a rune sphere, and it was my first ever time doing a rune sphere, and actually, it was quite cool. Hey guys, it's Ryan here, and welcome to the video where I attempt to solo corp and I'm forgetting dreadnips. This probably isn't gonna go well, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Yes! I did it! I soloed corp! Yes! Oh, oh my god! Actually, I just wanted to let you guys know that I've actually changed my name. I finally managed to get myself the name. VRS guy, which I am super freaking happy about. Uh, see, so yeah, if you see someone with the name the space RS space guy, that is that is me. How's it going, guys? It's Ryan here, and I'm here with my friend Sam. Uh, and welcome to uh, Racks from Scratch, uh, the series where we try to obtain noxious weapons or a noxious weapon from a rack store absolutely from scratch. No, are you kidding me? I just died to the grot worm. This is a sad. Sad day. Oh my god, we got the web! Oh my god! Oh! Oh, we got it! Oh my god! Oh my god! Alright. Oh! What? Oh my god! How did that even happen? What's going, guys? It's Ryan here, and welcome to testing out Decimation. Testing out the Twin Fury Blades, that is the blades of Avirus and Nomura where I'm going to be testing out the Dragon Rider Lance. We are going to be testing out the Miziari, Tier 92 Staff of Sliske, the Saren Godbow. And welcome to testing out the Zaros Godsword. I cannot even tell you how happy I am to be saying that. And welcome to this low level or beginner guide to Melee Araxor. Now before we start, I just want to quickly say this guide will not make up for practice, and practice absolutely every single time makes perfect. Even though this guide will cover everything you need to know, uh, beginner setups, tips, all that stuff, every single attack, every single mechanic, every single phase, uh, you will still most likely need to practice, and you might fail a couple times, but if you persevere, you'll definitely be able to get it. What's up guys, it's Ryan here, and welcome to Ground Zero of the Road to Insane Final Boss and All Tier 92s. The last series I did on this channel took about six or seven months and it was a road to a max cash drop tab and I thought it was going to take a lot longer than it did. When the series started I had no experience in high tier PVM and it still only took me six or seven months. So this time around with the whole summer in front of me, I thought we would step up the game and do something even more ambitious. Now, this isn't just a YouTube series. I want to get to know you guys, I want to interact with you guys, and the best place to do that is Twitch. So I will be streaming the entirety of this series What's up guys, it's Ryan here, and welcome to this beginner's guide to Telos from 0 to 500% in Rage. Good work guys, so that works. That 100% is the strategy. Oh my god. Some of you guys may know the first big series I ever did on YouTube was something called Araxor from scratch. This series took over a year to complete, as going into it we'd never done Araxor before, didn't have high stats, didn't have great gear, didn't have much game knowledge, and it was by far the most fun I've ever had on this game. So with that in mind, Cash and I decided to take our own gander at this challenge, try it again four years after the original challenge, but this time there will be no cooperation, there will be no working together, and this is a high stakes challenge. He won! Six months ago, I posted this video. My 1000% enraged Telos kill. And you'll see partway through the last phase that I switch capes to a defense cape with a sign of life in it, and I use a sign of life to skip the insta-kill mechanic in order to finish the kill. And even though I had killed 1k the same way a lot of people do their 1k kill, 
It just didn't feel like I'd earned it, and it didn't feel like I'd done it. A couple days ago, I managed my biggest PVM accomplishment ever. This is something that I didn't think I'd ever be able to do, and it's something that I thought was reserved to the best PVMers in the game. It's no easy task, and it's something that personally I didn't think I would ever be able to do in this game. Got it! One Kano food! Eighth of January 2019, I made a Hardcore Iron Man. The truth is, I created this account for one purpose. I want to get the Dormant title, which is a title for completing the entire Telos collection log on a Hardcore Iron Man account. This is by far my most difficult challenge ever. By my estimates, just getting to Telos could take over a thousand hours, and then it could be another thousand of Telos after that to get the drops I need. A lot of people have already told me that I'm not going to be able to do this, and that's never something that's held me back in the past. And, see ya! What a boss fight! What a boss fight! This it? Go! Yes! Let's go! Done! Done! My vault literally missed! I literally vault the dummy! And that's still world record! Done! Hello, and welcome to Telos from Scratch. Telos from Scratch is a series where Cash and I will be competing to see who can complete a full Telos weapon first from scratch. This series will play out like a video game, with Cash and I as the protagonists in the series. Certain actions we complete will toggle cutscenes. These cutscenes will have implications both to the story of why we're doing what we're doing, as well as to our actual characters in their day-to-day -day lives. I feel like I've been struck by a death click. What, what happened, happened last, last night? night? We're done. That's Tell Us From Scratch done. That is a wrap. That is the end of the challenge. It is over. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed 24 days from nothing to an orb set. We got two orbs in one day. What a tell -us streak. What a day of execution. We did not even sign. We didn't even sign. Running into the third firewall, I misclicked my 2H keybind, which unequipped my shield. This killed me. I can't believe I just did that. I just... Try and maul it. Oh my god! Oh my god, we did it! Oh my god! You just witnessed, by far, the greatest moment of my RuneScape playing career. To fully appreciate it, and to fully understand it, we need to talk about why Duo Hard Mode Virago is so hard. Oh my goodness, what happened? <gasps> F no! It's time for the end of Fast Rag. This journey has concluded. It ended not in fire and flames, but in a client crash. I think probably to the stomp from a hold still. Um, so that's how we ended things here. And it's time. It's just time. Locked and loaded, your hero will now be known as Stable Client. I just, I hope you all enjoy. I, uh, I think now's the right time to call it, but I had a lot of fun. I made a lot of really good memories on this account. This is the first account where I was like, oh, I can actually not stream PVMing every single day and people will still have a good time. you here before me to offer you a choice. A character needs a name, and an important, serious character such as this one, you know, it needs a name that is befitting of, 
you know, that kind of series. So in order to properly encapsulate that, I've done a lot of thinking over the last few days, and I think I've got the perfect name. Hello and welcome back. We are live from Jagex HQ, and I'm joined by Mods Sponge and Jack. And today we're going to be talking about the economy and death costs. I am joined by Mod Raman. Today we are going to be talking about power creep and game balance. So I've got Mods Pi, Raman, Ryan, and Sponge here with me today, and we're going to be talking about learning PVMing and a lot of the the thought process that goes into the way the combat system works and feels and is learned in uh, in 2022. Today I'm joined by Mods Timbo and Jack. We're going to be talking about game design, the concept of efficiency, and the dead content problem within RuneScape, or if it is even a problem. I'm free! I'm free! I can go outside! I can participate in society! Hello. Imagine one day you log in to your RuneScape account, like you normally would. But upon hitting that login button, you realize that something has gone incredibly wrong. Your coin pouch has been emptied and your entire bank is gone. What would you do? If it were me? Well, the first thing that I would want to do is I would want to rebuild. That's We're actually free. I'm free! Welcome to the PVM Nuzlocke. In this challenge, I'm starting with no gear and no items, and I've ordered every single boss fight in RuneScape by difficulty. We're gonna start at the easy bosses and work our way all the way up to the most difficult boss fights in the game. He teleported me! And unfortunately, on phase three, that is exactly what happened. After an absolutely miraculous run and punching well above my weight, Solo Virago has bested me, and that is the end of the Nuzlocke. You first! Dude, we absolutely crushed that. We absolutely obliterated that. And that timeline takes us to today. Before I say anything else, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you, because I've had such an incredible experience working with the RuneScape community and being a part of the RuneScape community for my entire adult life. I met my fiance through RuneScape and we're getting married in about a week's time. So that's very much on my mind and that's been very prevalent. But in addition to that, I also got to interact with all of you incredible, fantastic people. And that has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. But this community hasn't just been really important to me on the personal side, it's also led to a lot of really cool opportunities, like the entirety of the 2023 year when I got to take classes with YouTube Canada on how to be the best creator I possibly can be. This is incredibly insightful to me, and you may notice that in the last couple months, the content that we've been posting has kind of taken a pretty big step up, and a lot of that is as a result of that class and those courses that I took with YouTube. So shout out to them, that was really, really awesome. But it also led to some really interesting and very meaningful discussions about the state of being a RuneScape creator. Because when YouTube performed all of their analysis on my channels, effectively what they told me is, Ryan, we think you're a great content creator. We think you understand what makes a video good and how to tell a good story and all that other stuff. But they said, have you considered making content for other games? Because we think you'd be massively successful if you went somewhere else. Hearing that directly from YouTube honestly made me really sad because I've been a RuneScape creator forever. I love this space. I love working with creators and I also love making my own content. But it's also something that I think when I say that, a lot of people who are watching go, yeah, that probably kind of checks out. That kind of makes sense uh, because it comes with the territory of making content or being a creator in a small or a niche game or a niche directory. It limits the amount of growth you can have, where if the objective is to appeal to the most people possible, that makes it a lot harder right from the onset. But that being said, my goal has never been to be the biggest creator I can be, or the best creator I can be. It's always been, from a very young age, to be the best RuneScape creator I can be. And that's exactly what I told YouTube. I said, hey, I really appreciate this, I think the insight is great, but the thing that I want to do is I want to try to make it work within RuneScape. I've been in this community for my entire life. I've been playing this game since I was seven years old. And it's something where I like being a creator because of RuneScape. I like the challenges that come with it. And I also just like working and interacting with this dedicated community that we've had for so long. So that's effectively why I told YouTube, I'm not going anywhere. But that also led to a lot of important discussions past YouTube and past how I run my own channels and how I run my own streams. 
and eventually those conversations made it to Jagex, where I had the opportunity to chat with them a number of times over the last year, year and a half about the creator space in particular. I've always been an advocate for RuneScape creators. I've always felt like this is a place and a space and a game that has a ton of potential, but it needs some things to happen in order for that potential to be unlocked. And Jagex completely agreed with me. They've wanted to improve the creator space for a very long time because I think creators are pretty fundamental and foundational to RuneScape, and they kind of always have been. Coming out of those discussions with Jagex, they commissioned me to make an audit of the creator space, and I ended up spending about a month on this thing. It was 12,000 words long, it was 35 pages long, and it aimed to pretty well in one place put down a lot of information and answer a lot of the questions about the state and the health of the creator space. A lot of it was analytics driven, but it was also related to my personal expertise in the field and a lot of the things that I've learned from YouTube and from Twitch in the last several years. And then coming out of that audit, there started to be rumblings and conversations from inside of Jagex about what it might look like to bring me on board as a full-time contractor in order to help make the creator space the best it possibly can. And I'm making this video because after months and months of back and forth and logistics and trying to figure out how they could possibly commission me on a full-time basis from Canada to do this, uh, this was my first week at Jagex. So I'm a JMod and I am going to be working exclusively, specifically to help improve RuneScape for creators and improve the health of the creator space. I am just so incredibly excited that this is basically a dream opportunity for me because anyone that knows me outside of streaming outside of YouTube knows the thing that I do the most and the thing I spend the most of my time on is working with creators. I'm a little biased here, but this is a really cool role because not only am I going to be doing stuff on the community management side where I'm actually going to be working with creators and dealing with creators and trying to create opportunities for creators, but in addition to that, I'm also going to be working with the developers to make sure that the content that's coming out in the game is coming out in such a way that it is the best it possibly can be for creators to make content with. And if that doesn't make sense to you, the way that I've been describing it is effectively RuneScape is a blank canvas that a creator can use to make a creative project or tell a story. And if there are fundamental issues within RuneScape or within the game itself that prevent creators from telling those stories or sharing those experiences, that's the kind of thing that I would want to help address. So that's an overview of the role itself. But I also want to take some time and talk about what this means for my own content creation and my own journey as a creator. Because obviously when you take a full-time role, there are fewer hours in the day for making your own personal projects and your own personal content. I think I made this video as kind of a walk through time and through all the different eras of this channel, just as a way to remember and look back. And it really does feel like this is the end of an era. But that being said, I feel like I was put on this earth to be a content creator. I absolutely love streaming and I love making YouTube videos as well. Even with me taking this Jagex role, I want to make it very clear that this is not the end of my content creator journey. I've got a fantastic editing team supporting me and they're going to be able to continually get videos going out even when I have a little bit less time. And the exact same can be said about the streams. I love being a streamer. I love hitting that go live button and having fun and messing around with everybody over on Twitch. And that's going to be continuing as well. It's not going to be an easy job. It's going to be a difficult, time consuming, probably stressful job. And it's also something that's really important to me too. So I'd say as we're getting settled into this role, have a little bit of patience with me and we're going to settle in to a routine that works. But I will absolutely continue to be a YouTube creator as well as a streamer on my personal channels throughout all of this, because there is nothing in the world that I'd rather do. So anyway, that's the role. That's sort of the rundown of everything that I wanted to go over. And I think the last thing I'm going to say in this video is just a massive thank you to this community for always believing in me, always rooting for me and always supporting me. It's impacted me more than one would think and maybe more than a lot of people know. And I don't think I say thank you nearly enough. So with that said, the end of one era, the beginning of another era, and thank you all so much for watching.